So the only things we're going to epoxy in at this time are these hook hangers and the line tie. We're not going to do the hinges. We're going to set those aside because I need to be able to take this apart for painting and finishing. Okay, looks like I've got more than enough real estate here to go with the bigger weight diameter. And maybe even here in the tail section a little bit. So I'm going to take a little guess here. I think this is going to need quite a bit of weight. Um, so let me pick out some, maybe some of the bigger ones. Let's look at these pieces individually for a sec. Yeah. Okay, so the front is pretty close to where I want it to be. Now let's test them together. Feel like that's pretty close to where I want it. I'm wanting this lure to be kind of a top water uh, wake bait type glider. And uh, it is riding fairly high in the water right now, but what you have to keep in mind is once I put paint and clear coat and um, I drill out the holes for the weights and fill those in, it's going to lose some of that buoyancy. So I'd rather leave it a little bit more on this buoyant side for now. Let's just do one final test on this uh, now that I've got the uh, lead ballast in place and sealed up. We'll just see how it sits. It might just be slightly nose heavy. It's got a good float to it. Again, it'll get a little bit more weight on it as we finish it up. Uh, but if it gets a little bit too heavy, I'll just switch to lighter hooks. I think that looks great. Let's move on to the next step. Making these fins turned out to be a pretty big ordeal, so if you want to see that process, you can check it out at the link up here.
I'm actually going to paint outside because it's a really nice day today and I don't want to set up all the fans and everything. Still want to wear your respirator when you're painting even if it's outside, but uh, that'll save me a little bit of setup anyway. Once you prime your lure, you can really see the defects in it. Um, and this is a good time to smooth it up, get all the little details worked out that you want to. Now, if you look closely uh, on this one, you can see there's a whole bunch of these little micro bubbles all over it. If that sort of thing bothers you like it bothers me, um, I do have a solution here that has worked for me. What I do is I take some of this drywall spackle and um, I get it a little bit thin, so you can add a little bit of water to it just to thin it down a little bit. You smear it over the whole thing. Now this is going to be a time-consuming solution here. A better solution may be to fix the resin mixture so that the bubbles don't form in the first place. I may have had some moisture in my micro balloons. All right, we're gonna let that dry. I'll, I'll do both sides, but we're gonna let that dry and then we'll uh, start sanding it down and cleaning it up. We got all that done. I know that's a lot of extra work, but um, it's worth it to me because I want to make the best lure that I can make. So with that, let's uh, take it back outside and prime it again. All right, I wanna mix up a custom color here, and uh, the best way I can describe it is that it's gonna be a gray, but with just a hint of green in it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start with some opaque white, and then I know black goes a long way, so I'm just gonna put one drop in it. We'll sneak up on it one at a time. Wicked Detail Moss Green. I'll see what we got and we can adjust from there. I feel like we can go a lot more on the black and green. Maybe getting there. Yeah, I'm liking that. Let's get it mixed really well. Still seeing some streaks in there, so let's get it mixed real well. But I think that's the right color.
Got some pretty bad peeling right there that we're going to have to have to work on. If you want to support the channel and look good doing it, you can now get your official Zimtex merchandise. Just click on the store tab or the link to my website in the video description. There you can find everything Zimtex, including gear, links to the products I use, and other cool stuff. I want to stop here for a second and have a quick discussion. As you can see, I went with a little bit darker motif than my original drawing and added a little bit more color to it. Um, I went darker because I think that's going to look better against this bright neon color. I think it's just going to make that neon color pop a little bit more. The other thing we can talk about here is this uh, peeling that I've got in the bottom. Um, I think that that's a moisture related issue because I used drywall spackle uh, to smooth some of that. It may have still had a little bit of moisture in it which caused it to delaminate when I peeled it with the tape. Um, I don't ordinarily have problems with that, but um, either it wasn't dried out very good or it reabsorbed some of the moisture from the paint. Um, in any case, that may not be the best material for larger areas. It didn't give me any trouble out here on those micro bubbles that we fixed, but these larger areas, that may not be the best thing to use. Like I said, I generally don't have problems with that because I dry it out really well. And fortunately, this is in a place that is easier to fix. So um, I think we can patch that up pretty easily. That's really the only place I had a problem. I did have a tiny spot here under this fin. Uh, which I can fix as well. That's not a big deal. But as a lure maker, I'm always trying out different things and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I have heard of people using a wood putty or a wood filler uh, for those areas and maybe that's a better option because it may not reabsorb the moisture as well. But that's part of why I'm doing this. You can learn from my mistakes and learn from my successes as well. I've got the uh, pectoral fins taped off here. Um, and I blocked them really well so I don't have any overspray. But uh, I'm going to put opaque white on them and then fluorescent yellow. to me because I'm not really all that good with an airbrush um, I had a lot of overspray in areas that I didn't want so I'm going back and fixing those areas right now I've masked off a few things but I'm mostly going to try to just be really careful what I want is some pearl gills and a pearl bottom lip so I'm gonna try and fix that right now while I got my airbrush out and we'll see if we can't get it cleaned up a little bit here thinking about how I'm going to deal with this uh, issue down here and I think I've got a solution. I'm going to put some of this Instacure on there real thin to seal it up real good. That should lock in some stability there and then I may have to lightly sand that to get it as smooth as I can 
and then we'll start painting layers over it. Um, I'll be surprised if I'm able to get it to where you didn't even know it was there. It's probably always going to be somewhat visible, but I think we can uh, make it manageable. But I wanted to show this because I don't want to give the impression that I don't have any issues and that I can just build a lure straight through the first time without ever messing up. I mess up all the time. And so part of the trick is figuring out how to repair those uh, boo-boos. I gotta say, I think that turned out better than I was expecting. So now that we got that taken care of, we can uh, continue to move forward here. I just made a split decision that these needed a little bit more detail in them. The next thing I'm wanting to do on this is to apply a wash um, over it so that I can get some detail down into those uh, scales, some shadow. But before I do that, what I need to do is apply a coat of this uh, Kamar varnish over the whole thing because I'm going to be introducing uh, a watered down paint and so I need this to be all sealed up really good so that it doesn't run. So the first thing we're going to do is make our wash and I'm going to get some clean water. I need quite a bit. And then I'm going to use this transparent black. Let's put a few drops in there. Let's do one, two, three, four, five drops.
I'm trying something uh, new to me here, this uh, KBS Diamond Clear Finish. I've used the spray before, but I've not used the brush on version. So I thought I'd give this a try and uh, see what it's all about. I know a lot of people use it. Here's a quick look at my drying wheel setup. Um, I can, you can see I've got my pieces on opposite ends and then I've counterbalanced this side and that's so that when it turns over it doesn't slam over uh, because that repeated slamming can cause these pieces to shake loose out of their clamps. So you want to have a, a balanced wheel that's pretty smooth. This one's still got a little bit of a jump to it right there, but that's not going to be enough to knock this off of its uh, wheel. All right, so I think that's nice and cured. Um, the instructions say it can take up to seven days to get a full cure, um, but it's been over 24 hours and it's um, dry to the touch. It's no tackiness left. Feels pretty hard. Um, I will say what I really like about this clear coat is that it leaves a lot of that texture on there. Uh, all that carving that I did, you can still feel it some of the clear coats I use, they would fill that in completely and it would just be a smooth, um, shiny finish. But I, I like having that texture on there. I think, I think that's a really cool aesthetic to have on it. Especially you can see around here on the scales as I shine the light on it. So, so far I really like it. I'm going to install these silicone fins and I'm going to be using some, just some waterproof silicone caulk. Now the tail's going to be a little bit different. It's kind of tricky, so what I'm going to do is put a glob here, here, and here. Because to get it in, what I have to do is stretch this fin, put it in there, and then let it go, and it sucks into place there. See if I can do that without making a 
a huge mess. After I gave that silicone a good 24 hours to set up, it it's in there pretty good. I, I tested these fins and I pulled on them and this tail fin has a lot of bearing surface on it and it's really in there. I don't see it coming loose at all. Um, I did test the top fins pretty hard and they were in there pretty good, but I could pull them out. So um, I've switched here to some of this extra thick Instacure. And I'm just gonna put that in there really thick. I already did this rear fin and it's really, I think, in there just a little bit better. So I'm gonna put a, a pretty good amount in there. There's not a lot of things that bond to uh, silicone. We're gonna let that cure up. I'm not gonna use any accelerator on it. I'm just gonna let it cure up on its own. But I think that will just give me a little bit better bond. Let's get a final length and weight here. This is without hooks. Twelve ounces. Let me throw some hooks on there. It's twelve point eight four ounces. Let's say thirteen ounces. Length. Ten inches, right on it. I've got the tank set up because I want to do a little demonstration here now that this is all completed and put together. I've got a small set of hooks right here, which are just kind of regular treble hooks. And then I've also got a larger set of hooks here, which are like 3X hooks, and they're even a bigger size. But what I want to do is demonstrate the difference between the two for this particular lure. So I'm going to hook on these um, smaller ones and you can see that it will float okay and then I'm going to swap those out we'll put the heavy ones on And that transforms this into a very slow sink. And that's pretty handy. What that allows me to do is fish this um, however I want to. If I want it to be on top and be more of a wake, I can do that. Or I can pop these uh, heavier hooks on and I can do a slow sink. So. That's pretty neat for versatility. I really like that high vis pin. You can really see what's going on with the lure. With a steady retrieve, it does kind of a nice glide. Not super wide. If you go a little bit faster, it kind of goes down since it's slightly nose heavy. You can see it there. I don't know that I particularly want to put the sinking uh, hooks on it today because I don't want to lose it on my first day. So I added a, a ring onto the front here. And we're gonna see what that does to it. I think it 
makes it a little bit easier to fish. Just do a steady retrieve. Nice. Yeah, I think that ring helps it with the uh, range of motion a little bit. Alright, I'm pretty happy with the results on that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can make more of the content you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.